One of the unfortunate realities about just cloud native DevOps, platform engineering, I don't know, whatever you feel like calling it, is the fact that a lot of the stuff that's happening underneath the hood is stuff that we've already been doing for years now. So like, for example, you know, in this video, we're going to be talking about Docker networking and we're going to be diving into it from a hands-on perspective, but Docker networking is no different than any other networking. What I mean by that is ports are still ports, firewalls are still firewalls, IP addresses are still IP addresses. That doesn't really change. So what I'm trying to say is the core functionality of what we do in the Docker space, even in the Kubernetes space, that that's, you know, outside of the scope for the series, but in, in anything that we do, any service that we touch in the cloud, anything on prem, any platform like Kubernetes, any containerization engine and runtime like Docker, it's still using all of the underlying things, standard infrastructure, standard networking, even standard security, the best practices that you would see from a security perspective, it's all the same. That's what I'm really trying to get at here. Now, the biggest difference when we're thinking about Docker networking, specifically just container networking, Docker networking, whatever you'd like to call it, is the host networking and the container networking. Now, what do I mean by that? So with containers, you have an actual network. We'll call it a virtualized network. We're gonna see it more from a hands-on perspective coming up here in a second. But there's the container level networking that you manage for your containers. And then of course, there is the host level networking. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you're running a Docker container and the application inside of it is listening on port 80. So you run the Docker container locally or you know on a Linux box, wherever you wanna run it. And you try to access that container, but it comes up that you can't, you can't get it. You know, it's a not responding page or you know, whatever on the website or you know, on the browser tab rather when you try to hit the container on the browser tab. Now, why is this? Well, could be a couple of reasons, but in this instance, it's because port 80 isn't open on the host network. So if you're running a container locally and port 80 is not open, but you try to reach it anyways, well, guess what? It doesn't matter if port 80 is open on the container, you're not gonna be able to reach it at the host level. And that's really the biggest difference. The biggest difference is, you know, think about it like layers. You know, you got the host network and then you got the container network. So networking is still networking. Again, firewalls are still firewalls. IP addresses are still IP addresses. But the biggest difference is you have to now manage two layers. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and jump into the hands-on piece of this. We're gonna set up container networking to kind of see how it all works. All right, so first let's talk about container network drivers. So if I run docker network ls, we can see the current network IDs that are running inside of my Docker environment. Now, where's my Docker environment? I'm actually running Docker desktop right on my local host here. So you're probably not gonna see a lot of these. For example, you probably won't see the Minikube one. You probably won't see the kind one, but you should definitely see the bridge. So Docker does networking in a few different ways, but you're usually going to see this network driver. And there are two primary different styles of the network driver. First, there's the bridge, which is the default network driver. And this method is common when you're running containers in a standalone environment. And then you have the host networking, which is used in standalone environments again, but to remove network isolation, as in remove network isolation between the container network and the host network. All right, so now let's go ahead and run docker network inspect bridge. And if I scroll up here, as you can see, there's a bunch of JSON output. And effectively what this JSON output is showing us is all the information about this network. So the network ID, when it was created, the driver that it's using. Again, remember we were talking about drivers. And there's another type of driver. It's called Mac VLAN. We're gonna be talking about that in a little bit any IPv6 information, any IPAM information, et cetera. So this is just the internals or the description rather. Yeah, description is a good way to put it. This is the description of the network. So now let's say we wanna do some more stuff with you know, networking. Well, we can always use Docker network help. And this is gonna tell us the commands that are used or rather the commands that are available that we can use with the, de the descriptions here. So for example, we just did Docker network LS and we can even remove networks if we want to, which we'll see in a second after we create one. So let's go ahead and clear the screen here. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna run Docker network 
create. And what that's going to do is, I'm sure you guessed it, create a new network. <laughs> so Mike's new net, you can of course call it whatever you'd like. And now we have the ID here for it. So if I run Docker network inspect, or I'm sorry, Docker network LS again, we can now see that network here and we could run Docker network inspect against Mike's new net. And we can see that this is the same thing that we saw before, which is the description of our network. Of course, this is a little bit smaller than the default because the default network, like the bridge has, you know, a bunch of defaults in it, <laughs> which we did not set up. But we can see the default information, like the ID, the name, when it was created, any IPv6 information, IPM information, etc. And then to clean it up, what we can do is we can run Docker network RM, Mike's new net. All right, and now that's deleted, if we run docker network ls again, we can now see that it's no longer there. All right, so really quick, let's go ahead and recreate our network. All right, so we have this network, docker network ls. It's here and it's ready to go. Now we've created a network, great, but what about if we want to run a container on our new network? Because again, by default, if you run, you know, docker run it's going to be specifying the bridge network if that's your default so what we can actually do here is we can run a new container based on our network so if i run docker run tid network mike's new net and then we'll say we're going to use the nginx container image all right and as you can see that container is now running if i run docker container ls and if i scroll up here a bit we can see that container is officially running so if you want to run a specific container on a specific network you can do that by specifying the network flag all right and then we'll go ahead and we'll remove our network again and boom we have an error what does this error mean well this is like a safeguard so if you try to remove a network and a container is attached to that network you're gonna get this error here because the container is attached. So what we can do then in that case is we can copy this and we can say docker container rm and then we'll specify a force and then we'll go ahead and we'll remove that network and we can see that right here. All right, so far you've seen how to create a network, how to use a network, how to remove a network in the virtual network fashion as in it's tied to its own virtual network, but there could be situations, and you're gonna typically see this for like legacy applications, there could be situations where you need your network to be tied to the host network. And to do that, we're gonna use a Mac VLAN. So what the Mac VLAN does is it ties Mac addresses, hence the name, <laughs> to every container's virtual network interface. And what that does is it makes the container look like it's on the physical network. And there are two different ways that you can do this. You can either do bridged or you can do 802.1Q in trunked bridge mode. In this case, we're just gonna use the bridge mode. All right, so to do that, what you're gonna do right here is you're gonna use the Docker network create command again. You're gonna specify the Mac VLAN. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna give it the subnet that you want for that network and the gateway. Now, this should be tied directly to your host. So for example, in this case, my host's gateway, my host's computer right here, could be 172.16.86.1. Another way to think about your gateway is like your router. And then you specify what bridge you want it to be on. So in this case, you know, ETH0, that could be a bridge on my local host. And then the name of the new network. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy this. I'll go ahead and I'll run it. And we can see that was created successfully. If we run, docker network inspect mike's new net mac and i scroll up we can see a bunch of information here that we didn't see before so for example the scope is local we can see here our subnet and our gateway that we specified remember the last time we created the network we did not specify it it was just by default and then we can see the parent which is again the network interface of the bridge on your local computer and then again, to clean this up, we can just run docker network rm, Mike's new net Mac. 
And then if we clear our screen and we run Docker network LS, we'll see that that network is no longer there. And that is how you can get started thinking about Docker networking if you are in the infrastructure space today. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.